Alright guys, so in these intermediate example solves, I'll be doing two solves with the cross on white and then three solves with a color neutral cross. So let's start out by finding our four white cross pieces. So we've got this one already oriented in the cross layer, this one misoriented in the cross layer, this one here, and this one here. So what we can do, we can notice that if we um, shift the cross to the bottom here, and if we do an L prime to insert this white and orange edge, then these two will be correctly solved relative to one another. So what we can do is do an L prime followed by an R to move this one out of the bottom layer and move it into the middle layer to turn it from a bad edge into a good edge. And then we can just align these two with their corresponding centers. And then instead of, we can't, we shouldn't insert this one first, we should insert this one first. Because if we try and insert this one, then that will affect this one. But if we do an F, then that won't affect this uh, white and green one. And we can do an R2 to put it down into the bottom and then we need to start looking for our first F2L pair. So the first F2L pair that I see based on this top layer is this one and this one. And you know the, the other corner that stood out to me was this white, um, red and blue one, but the edge was back here. So that's not a very good F2L case. So it's better to do these two first and they belong in this back right slot here. So what we can do is do a U prime, move this corner over here, hide it, hide it, move the edge on top of it, and then insert it into the back right slot like that. And whilst we were doing that, I noticed that these two came into the top layer and we can insert them by doing a rotation. We can insert them into the back right slot here. So this edge and this corner. Like that. Now we have a decision to make. We can either solve this F to L pair, this corner and this edge, or this edge and this corner. And it's better in this case to solve these two first because it doesn't require a rotation in order to solve them. So we can set up this case like this and then do L prime U L to pair up the corner and edge and then insert it. And then lastly, we have this F2L pair. So we can insert that. Uh, I would personally rotate and insert it into the back right slot because I would prefer to do the moves with my right hand. Like that. Then I have OLL. and then PLL, G permutation. And solved. Okay, so initially when we see this scramble, it doesn't look like the white cross is going to be particularly easy, but what we do notice now is that we've got these two this white and orange and this white and red already attached to their centers and ready to just be inserted. And notice that when we insert this white and red one, this white and green one will attach to the white and green center here and will only require one move to finish off. So I would, I would probably do something like this. So it's important when you're solving the cross as well to try and make sure that your finger tricks are really nice and you can execute the cross quickly and avoid kind of awkward moves. So this is a little bit of a fancy one, but what I would do is firstly do a U prime so I would hold it from this angle, do a U prime to move this one to this position. So the white and blue attach it to the white and blue center. Then I would do something like, hold it like this and do a U D prime. So U D prime actually inserts these two cross edges and then do an R prime to insert this one and then do an L2. And there we've solved our cross with some quite nice finger tricks. Now the first F2L pair that I see is this, uh, these two, this corner and this edge which just require a three move insertion like that. Now we get to a situation where there's no really easy F2L pairs left to, um, to solve. So we've got, you know, this uh, white, blue and red, and this one here. Um, that one's probably the hardest to see because the corner's all the way back here. The one that I saw uh, that was most visible to me at this point was this edge and this corner down here. And we can insert it, we can solve it into this slot as follows. So I'll do a, a rotation, then do a U prime, R prime, U2, R. So the R prime, U2, R takes out this corner and puts the blue sticker on top there and sets it up to a three move case. And then I would insert it like that. And now what I would do is either, hmm, I would probably go for this edge and this corner. So I would, yeah, there's a few different ways you can actually solve this F2L pair. So what you could do is take it out like that, rotate, 
and insert it into the back. And it seems like this F2L um, has a lot of rotations in it, but that's okay. Um, sometimes you'll just have to deal with that sort of thing. And then the last F2L pair here is these two, so we can solve them like this. So split them up and set them up to a three move case and then insert. And now we've got OLL and then PLL, which is a J permutation. And remember, during your last layer, not to rotate uh, the cube in the y direction at all. Only use u and u prime moves or u two moves to set up your OLL and PLLs to the execution angles. Alrighty, time for three color neutral solves. So the first thing that I do is obviously try and decide which cross color that I'm going to do. And there's a few different options we can do on this solve. None of them are particularly easy, but I would probably just go with the blue. It seems fairly straightforward. The finger tricks are okay. Um, but there might be a slightly more efficient one. But again, in inspection time, you don't have that much time to, you know, see all of the cross solutions and figure out which one's the optimal one. You just have, sometimes have to choose one and then go with it. Um, because yeah, you don't have that much inspection time. So for the blue cross, what I would firstly need to do is misalign this white and blue one. So we've got this one and this one. So if we do a D prime LF like that, then we've got our three cross pieces like that. And then to finish off our cross, we've got this one here. So we can do D prime R D2. And that was a nice cross because it was rotationless. So it was just D prime LF, D prime R, D2. And yeah, pretty fast to execute. So the first F2L pair that I saw was actually these two. Um, whilst I was doing that cross. So I've got this corner and this edge, which belong in the back left slot here. And what we can actually do, instead of doing U2 and then inserting it as per normal, what we can do is do R, U, R prime to set it up, to pair up these two and then just do an L, U2, L prime to insert them into the back left slot there. And as I was doing that, I saw these two were ready to be inserted into the back right slot. So I can pair them up like that and insert. Now, hmm, we can do a number of different things for these last two F2L pairs. What I would try and do is actually, if we rotate to this position, so keeping our two slots empty on this right hand side here, we notice that these two edges are correctly oriented. So that is, we can insert them into their slots by just doing R and U moves. So that one can be inserted like that with an R, this one can be inserted correctly like that. So we only need to use R and U moves to actually finish off this entire F2L. And a neat little trick that we can do for these two F2L pieces is do something like R2, U. Actually, this will solve, this will solve the entire last two slots. This is kind of advanced, but it might be, you know, a handy little trick. I'm basically just trying to solve this one into this slot using R and U moves. So I would go R2, U, R, U prime. R2, and luckily enough that actually solved this F2L pair as well, which is, yeah, very lucky. Now we've got OLL, and we got a PLL skip. So that was a fairly easy solve after the first F2, uh, first two F2L pairs. Okay, fourth solve, let's look around to see what we've got. And kind of immediately I see that this uh, green cross is going to be pretty easy. It's just going to be uh, four moves. So, and the white cross is actually pretty easy in this case as well. But the green cross, we can just do like so. So we've got this uh, green and red one at the back, this one here, this one here, and then this one here. So if we do an L prime, these two are solved correctly relative to one, to one another because they're both attached to the opposite color centers. And then we can insert this one and then this one with an R prime F D2 like that. Now our first F2L pair is a little bit tricky in this case. The one that I see on the top layer where both the F2L pieces are on the top layer is this one. So I could either rotate like this or rotate like this. Um, I would prefer actually in this case to rotate like this, hide the corner and then insert it into the slot. Now I've got these two which belong in this front right slot here. So I'll notice that you know once I insert these two both my two front F2L slots will be filled, so I'll most likely have to do a rotation. I'll probably rotate this way immediately afterwards, just to help me look ahead and see what's going on with these last two slots. And 
yeah, there's there's barely anything. There's nothing particularly easy. Um, you know, I'd probably have to do do even a Y two rotation, and we can decide whether to solve these two or to solve these two. Um, I'd probably go with these two, which we can solve using that F two L algorithm, like that, like that. And then we've got these two, which we can insert. And I would hide the corner there. And then because these two edges are misoriented, because we've got these two oriented at the back, we can do a sledgehammer. And that gives us an OLL with all of our edges oriented. Then we can do our OLL algorithm. Um, from this angle, I use a different algorithm, or I use an alternative algorithm for, for headlights from this angle, which goes like this. And then we have an A permutation. So we can align it and finish off the solve. Alrighty, for the last solve in this video, we've got a pretty easy white cross and actually pretty easy crosses all over the cube, but let's just go with the white cross for fun. Um, so notice that we've got these two solved correctly relative to another, and this one um, would need to go over here in order for it to be correct, or either these, move these two over to these two positions, and our last cross edge is here. So we can do something like F and replace this one with this one, R prime DR, and then align our cross like that. So very easy. And the first F2L pair was already formed in the back here. So we can insert it by doing L U prime L prime. Then what I want to do is actually solve an F2L pair which doesn't need any rotations. And in order to solve the back right F2L pair, I don't need to do any rotations. So I've got this edge piece and this corner. So I can do U2 R U prime R prime to set this up to a three move case. And then insert it into the back right there. I can do these two. Um, I would probably rotate and insert them into the back right by hiding the corner, moving the edge across, and solving it like that. And then I've got this last F2L case, which again I would insert into the back right using that uh, sequence. Now I've got OLL and then PLL, V permutation. And before I did the PLL, I noticed that there would be a U2 AUF afterwards. So that so before actually executing that PLL, I was already setting up my hands to do the U2 after finishing the PLL algorithm instead of having to you know look around and try and guess um, which way to turn the top layer after finishing the PLL.